John is founder and portfolio manager at Iris Asset Management. Nice to see you, Juliet. Thanks for the time as always. Thank you, John. Nice to see you. So I guess as we've gone through all the uh, economic data, the central bank speak, and, and now a, a healthy dose of earnings, uh, where is your head at right now? What's your, what's your assessment of what's going on? Well, I think uh, if I look and see what the market's head, where the market's head is at, the market's head is spinning. There's been a lot of contrary data points and earnings announcements, and the economic data has also been a little bit different than what I think would have been expected maybe uh, two to three months ago. So when we look at the earnings picture, we've had a lot of data. We've had about 70% of the S&P 500 having reported already. The Canadian companies are also nearly through. Uh, we've got the banks next week, but maybe we can touch on them a little bit later. But I think what's interesting is that what a lot of the companies have noted is that the margin pressures continue, cost inf uh, inflation remains a challenge, and that while earnings have met expectations or even actually beaten expectations, JP Morgan actually uh, talked to the fact that earnings are actually down year over year, even though about 70% of the companies that have reported have actually exceeded expectations. So it's been a bit of a good news, bad news story, and that most companies are still expecting a fair bit of softening in operating conditions, and for some of the margin pressures to continue into the first half of 2023. And so when you have to make a decision on which companies or sectors are the most reliable on profit potential, given that you know, very real possibility of more earnings weakness, are, are there certain pockets, I mean, you talked about the financials, but are there certain areas that you feel a little bit more confidence in? Well, we always would like to find companies where there is an element of pricing power. Uh, you can argue that as we move into a potentially softening uh, environment, many companies are going to lose some of that pricing power and be a bit more inclined to discount some of their products to maintain volume. But overall, I think if we're looking at companies as long-term investors, there are plenty of opportunities in companies that have stable profitability, even if margins maybe are flat for the first half of 2023. Companies that deliver consistent um, uh, free cash flow and growing free cash flow in that their capital expenditures are more manageable and the companies that pay dividends. And I think that as we have looked to see some of what's happened in the market, that dividend stability has been rewarded. You know, the, the first few weeks of 2023 have been really interesting with the markets having been incredibly strong. We saw some of the worst performers uh, be some of the best performers so far this year. So names like Netflix, Tesla, obviously, uh, really, really strong. Disney, soft last year, recovering this year on uh, Mr. Iger's reappointment and his plan. But I think that um, overall, there are significant Significant opportunities in some of the stable companies with solid profitability that aren't those growth oriented names that have driven the outperformance so far this year, but maybe have more stable and more seasoned businesses, more stable profitability, more durable business models, more reasonable valuations. And we are really, we are really uh, interested in, in some of those names. Well, it's, you know, you look at uh, what you're uh, receiving in dividends from the likes of Netflix and Disney and Tesla, and you gotta, you gotta squint, Who's you gotta it? look real yeah. close to see if there's anything coming to you in the form of a dividend. Um, well, let's get into the banks because uh, uh, you know that is a group where there are dividend yields in the four, five percent range. I don't have to tell the BNM Bloomberg faithful about the dividends that come from the financials, but there are these questions about where the economy is headed from here. We will start to get a read on what's happening with many of the, the Canadian big banks. We already have uh, insurance player Manulife out with results today. But, you know, over the next couple of weeks, we'll start to get a quick update on what's happening in their businesses. Is that an area that you think is, is, is worthy of your investment dollars right now? You know, it is, and the banks are always under scrutiny. Right now, uh, they've come off the lows, which is encouraging, but they're still relatively inexpensive uh, historically on a valuation perspective. Uh, what we expect out of the quarter is uh, continued favorable net interest margins. Obviously, rising interest rates helps that. But on the opposite side, uh, capital markets are likely to remain weak. We got an indication of that 
earlier in the reporting season with some of the big U.S. money center banks having reported fairly disappointing levels of uh, capital markets activity, investment banking activity. Mm. Uh, large deals are just not happening as much as they were maybe a year ago. And that um, some of the credit quality issues are likely to be in focus. That said, when we look at the employment numbers, there is some fairly good reason to expect that credit quality will remain uh, manageable and under control. Um, that said, uh, investor or sorry, borrowers are seeing higher costs, so loan growth is likely to be slower. But from an employment um, view, the we still are seeing that there is solid support for credit quality. But inflation is eating into everything. Um, we think that there is rising costs are going to affect a lot of borrowers over time. It might be decent this quarter, but looking into the uh, second half of 2023, some of these rising costs are likely to start affecting credit quality on the part of borrowers.